In this video, I'm going to be showing you the difference between a cottage pie and a shepherd's pie, and I'll be making one of them and showing you the difference. Thanks. G'day everybody and welcome to my Aussie gardening kitchen. If it's your first time here, my name's Darren, but please call me Daz. And my channel is a cooking and gardening channel based here in Australia. I do a lot of preserving, canning, I grow my own fruit and veggies. And if that's something that you like to see, please consider subscribing and joining me along my journey. People quite often confuse a shepherd's pie and a cottage pie. And quite simply, a shepherd's pie is made with lamb and a cottage pie is made with beef. And a way to remember that is to think of a shepherd tending to the sheep. So there you go, a shepherd looking after the sheep, lamb, lamb pie, and the other one, the cottage, being the beef pie. Shepherd's pie and cottage pie go way back in English history. And I believe I was taught when I was an apprentice chef that a cottage pie was basically made by people in the cottages when they had leftover beef and potatoes become more affordable. So what they do was they'd use the leftover beef and if they could, maybe possibly mix some veggies, but they'd make a beef in a gravy and top it with mashed potato. And then they'd use that instead of a pastry. And that's how they had their cottage pie. So in this video, I'm making two cottage pies, but really, if you wanted to make a shepherd's pie, all you've got to do is switch out the ground beef that I'm using for ground lamb, and you've essentially got a shepherd's pie, just like the cottage pie, but with that ground lamb. So I've got a nice hot pan here, and as always, We've got some olive oil, well not always, but olive oil in the pan and I'd say that's about three tablespoons of olive oil. Just move it around the pan, just to get it hot. Alright, we'll get the onions into the pot. And we'll move those onions around in the pan. Like so. The onions have been sweating in the oil for about, say, a minute now, so it's time to put the other veggies. That's the celery and the carrot. And I like to make the carrot and the celery a slightly bigger dice, just so you can see those nice pieces of the vegetables in the final dish. All the ingredients and the recipe will be down below in the description. So you can just scroll down to there and grab all that information that you need. So it's been about five minutes and the veggies are looking pretty good. I've drawn out some of the flavour and the onions have gone nice and translucent, which is great. So I'm going to take these out now and pop them into a bowl and they'll go back into the mix a little bit later. If you don't mind me taking a moment to explain to you about this wonderful collaboration that I'm taking part in. During the month of March, Tony from Kettle Kitchen and Leanne from Mennonite Farmhouse are hosting this wonderful collaboration where a whole bunch of us have been invited to share our pie recipes with you. And one lucky viewer is going to have a chance to win a prize. A $100 gift card, I believe, an Amazon gift card. It's a fantastic prize. And to be in the draw, all you've got to do is watch the videos and comment meaningfully and someone's going to be chosen at random and it could be you. So do watch the videos and I wish you the very best of luck. So with the pot still nice and hot on the high flame, I've just added about a tablespoon of olive oil again and it's time to pop the ground beef in, the minced beef. Now what I'm going to do here is just push it around a little bit just so all of the surface of the pot has got ground beef in there, like so. And I'm just going to let that sit now and start to brown on one side. Kind of like doing a pancake, except I guess this is a meat pancake. Yum. This is a kilo of the ground beef, so what's going to happen is it's going to release a lot of liquid. That's fine. We're going to let that liquid come out. We're going to evaporate that liquid, and then we're going to cook it down and caramelize all those flavors that are already in there from the veggies. So I'm just going to let it go as it is for now. That's perfectly fine. 
Oh, and by the way, a kilo, I'll put that in pounds on the screen right now. Okay, it's been about a minute. Let's turn it over. As you can see, there's little bits of browning here. That's what I'm after, that flavour. Don't worry about all that liquid that you can see in the pot. That's perfectly fine. If you wanted to, you could only do half of this at a time and do a couple of batches. But hey, I just like to chuck it in, reduce the liquid out and just get the colouring happening and you'll see that happen and away we go. And then that fat that you can see, that fat is actually going to help me saute this beef and get it nice and brown and give this a really nice meaty flavour. It's going to depend on the heat of your burner, but it's taken me about four to five minutes to evaporate that liquid. And if you can listen carefully now, I'll lean in. You might be able to hear that crackling, that sizzling sound where that fat is now starting to cook that beef. So this is where we're going to get some colour into that beef and really draw some flavour out of it. There you go, you could hear that. So I'm just scraping down the bottom, not only to stop it from burning and catching, but also I'm scraping up all that beautiful flavour that's caramelising on the bottom of the pot. So now I'm switching over to my mince mashing tool. Awesome, awesome tool. This is a gift from a friend of mine in America, Lisa from Yogi Hollow Farm. And this does a fantastic job of breaking up the beef. I don't want to break it up too much, but I still want to break down some of those bigger lumps. If you think this is really cool, I'll pop a link to them in my description down below. All right, that's broken up pretty well. So I think I'll go back to my spoon now. While this is browning, I'm dropping in an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. In goes half a teaspoon of salt. I'll check that seasoning a bit later. Scraping the bottom, getting those brown nuggets of goodness off the bottom. So hopefully you can see now that I've really started to caramelize the beef of those flavors from the bottom of the pot. So now it's time to add some tomato paste. That's three tablespoons of tomato paste. Stirring it in with the back of the spoon, you can squash it in and stir it in. Just watching the bottom of the pot. I'm taking mine as far as I can with going brown without burning it. Here's one cup of red wine. Watch out for the steam and give it a good stir and scrape that pan. Get those flavours off the bottom. Reducing that wine down, drawing the flavours all out together. You don't have to use red wine if you want to. You can add a quarter cup of beef stock, and we're going to be adding beef stock again in a second. But you can replace that red wine with beef stock if you like. Or tomato juice. Put some tomato juice in there instead of the red wine. How awesome is that colour? Look at that. I'm telling you, it smells as good as it looks. It is so rich in flavour, and that red wine... You've probably heard it before, it gives it a real depth of flavour. That's why I love using it in stuff like this. And for anybody interested, that's an Australian Cabernet Merlot. So to this, I'm going to drop in my bay leaves, my cloves of garlic, freshly picked thyme from the garden, giving it a stir, making sure it doesn't burn. My gosh, the smell in here is absolutely amazing. It is so good. Those veggies that we removed before. Give that a good stir in. Now at this stage, I've got a quarter cup of flour here, plain flour. 
I think I'm only going to add about half of it and we'll see how we go. So that's about an eighth of a cup of flour. And the purpose of this is that when I put the stock in, in a minute, it's going to thicken and make a really nice gravy. And it's up to you how you like your shepherd's pie. We like ours nice and thick and you know what, I'm going to add it all. Quarter cup of flour. Give that a good mix. Make sure I'm scraping the bottom, making sure it doesn't catch and burn. Okay, here I've got beef stock. That's just off the shelf supermarket beef stock powder that I've added to water. And we'll get that in there. Making sure I'm scraping those sides down. Making sure there's nothing sticking. Worcestershire sauce. There's a quarter cup of it there. Worcester sauce or Worcestershire sauce. I'll let you guys argue in the comments as to what you call it, but it all tastes the same, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've turned down the heat to a quarter heat. I'm going to put the lid on and maybe every two or three minutes just open it up and give it a stir and a scrape so it doesn't catch. And what I'm doing is basically bringing out all those flavours and reducing down some of the liquid and making a nice thick flavoursome gravy. Yum. So while that's happening, it's going to take about, give it 15 minutes roughly, get your potatoes going, and I'll show you something that I do that works really well in a minute. Okay, I've just turned this off. It's right where I want it. It's nice and thick and dark and rich. Look at this. Oh, I just want to eat it now off the spoon. Add the peas now. There's no need to cook the peas, so you add them frozen. That way they're going to cook in the mix and also they're going to keep their colour a lot better by adding them this late into the recipe. As you can see, I've got the two casserole dishes here. So we'll get the mix into the dishes. Notice I didn't scrape out the pot. I'm going to get some bread and scrape that out with bread. I just have to. One of the best tips I can give you with a cottage pie or a shepherd's pie is that with this mix here now, leave it aside, let it cool down. The gravy is going to thicken and it's going to make it so much easier for the potato to go on top. It'll be such an easier thing to work with. I really recommend just popping it in the fridge or leaving it on the bench. Work on your potatoes and get potatoes ready. And you want those potatoes nice and warm and nice and smooth so they'll just go on top and spread really easy. So with the potatoes, all I did was peel them and then I've just cut them all roughly into the same size just so they all cook evenly. Get those into the cold water. It's about a teaspoon of salt. Give it a stir. Lid on and it's just a matter now of bringing them to the boil. When it comes to the boil, dropping it down to a nice hard simmer. It's time to get the potatoes out of the water. They're done. It's been about 10 minutes. To test them, all you do is get a slotted spoon and a fork, which I've already done. And you just get one, poke it with a fork, and there you go. It breaks quite easily. Done. Turn it off, get them out, and strain them, and let them sit in the strainer for a couple of minutes just to dry out a little bit. What you would do now is get your nice dry drained potatoes into the pot and mash them with the potato masher. But we have a potato ricer here, so we're going to use the potato ricer. The potato ricer gives it a really nice, really fine texture, so that's why we've got one. If you'd like to check these out for yourself, I'll pop a link down in the description. How good is that? Look how soft and fluffy that is. Magnificent. Get yourself a little saucepan or a little pot. Put two tablespoons of butter into the pot. Get it melting. Add one quarter cup of milk. 
just give it a little bit of a stir and warm it up together pour that into a potato mix one cup of shredded cheddar cheese or a cheese of your choice I recommend a, a strong aged cheddar but you can use whatever you want pepper to taste salt to taste a pinch of nutmeg you know what two pinches give that a stir and blend it all in get it all mixed together now you might be able to see that I've taken the cheese straight from the fridge so it's been really really cold so it's not completely melted in the potato which is awesome so now when I put the potato on I'm gonna have these little nice streaks of cheese going all through the potato when putting on the potato stuff the edges first and work your way in so just get it like that and work away all the way around the edges first then you can go to the middle and you can fill in the gaps and as you can see by leaving it and letting that settle it's nice and firm and it's not going to be a sloppy mess when you're adding your potato I can see those specks of cheese all the way through there fantastic clean the edges of your casserole dish and with your fork just scrape it along and rough up the surface bit of melted butter go back over the surface again just to get it all squiggly and all marked there we go one down then this one here it's getting a slight sprinkling of a powdered parmesan 185 degrees celsius in the oven i'll pop fahrenheit on the screen now so as you can see these beauties are now out of the oven they've got an absolutely beautiful potato crust on top this rough surface that I gave it has caused all these nice ridges to crispen up and then the very top layer of the potato is a nice crusty layer then you've got the smooth potato underneath and then of course you've got that beautiful rich beef and gravy and vegetable mix down below really can't wait to tuck in now you may get some of the gravy burst through the potato where it may have been a bit thin like I have I'm obviously not perfect but that's fine it's still going to taste the same really looking forward to it I really hope my video showed you all the steps in making your own cottage pies they're a fantastic thing to make they're absolutely delicious thank you very much for being here with me today I do appreciate it please check out all the other videos in the collaboration and if you wouldn't mind checking out my other videos on my channel too including this one on the screen right now Thanks, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now.